Good morning. Out here taking a hike on the uh, Savoy's River Trail. And beautiful trail out here in northern Maine. Mount Chase area. Heading over towards Baxter State Park. So before we go to the office, we sometimes we'll go out for a morning hike like this. If not on our own land, then we'll come out here to another place. And uh, very blessed to be out here. It's a great thing. A lot of rocks on the trail. So you can see behind me there. So I have to constantly be looking down and make sure I'm not tripping. And I'll try to switch hands here. So you can see over there, beside me is the Savoy River. So there you go, right there. Love to hear the sound of the water rushing and it's a great reminder being out in God's creation that uh, God is in control of things and God, it's, it's a blessing to know that there are still places where you can go and see God's creation. And uh, my recommendation to all of my viewers is find a place where God's creation is in your area and uh, go enjoy it. Get out there. Even if it's a park or whatever, go get around natural things. And uh, the invisible things of the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Romans chapter 1 talks about that. Um, you have to remember that God, the purpose of nature and creation, is for men to give glory to God. And the fact that the most, most people don't, most people give glory to destruction and violence and war and death called evolution. <laughs> uh, what a weird bunch of satanic people. But I'd like to talk a little bit about the idea of Christian resistance. And, um, and he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That is a huge pine tree. Let me show you this thing. That's a big guy. Yeah. Wow. That's a big tree here behind me. Look at that thing. Way up there. Yeah, that's a big one. Don't see many like that anymore. You can see my hand on this big guy. Too hilly back in here for the logging rapist to come back in. I'm not against logging, I used to be a logger. Um, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And uh, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And uh, you can log in a way that is uh, wise and sustainable. You actually are improving the health of the forest. And then you can log in a way where you're just trying to make the money and trying to get lots of wealth. And that's what most logging is here in Northern Maine. It's all about speed. Buy million dollar machines to get in and take whole forests down within uh, a matter of a day or two. Let me grab something here quick. There's a robin egg right there. Pretty neat. The blue egg of a robin that's hatched. So somewhere above me is a little baby robin right now wanting a little worm or something from its mother. So, always beautiful to see the robin eggs. I've seen them all throughout my life growing up in the country. Get back to the subject. Um, <clears throat> the idea of resisting. Um, there are things that we know as Christians to be true. There are prophecies of the scriptures that will come to pass prophecy is pre-recorded history these things will happen there will be a, a new world order there will be an antichrist it didn't all happen in the past a bunch of satanic devils trying to say it did it didn't all happen in the past there was never a time when no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark in his right hand or in his forehead that technology didn't exist the two witnesses didn't come back 
all the trees, you know, a third of the trees burned up, all green grass burned up, never happened in the past. Oh, it's just symbolic or something now. Um, so we know prophecy is going to come to pass. But there's a sense which he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's a reference to the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit indwelling the body of Christ, but specifically the body of Christ. That's why the Antichrist cannot show up until the body of Christ is gone. Uh, how do you know? Because John goes up before the Antichrist is unleashed. He gets up there, the 24 elders are there, they are crowned. And then you have the great company of angels, uh, less than 200 million angels, round about the throne. And in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. It's all right there, just plain as day. And the 24 elders are from every kindred, tongue, people, nation. How many uh, nations and kindreds and tongues are there according to the scriptures? Deuteronomy chapter 32 says that there are 12. Uh, so 12 natural boundaries that God set up. And <clears throat> you have to, you know, you want to be able to trace your ancestry back to one of those 12 boundaries. And uh, that's a whole other issue there. But my whole point is, um, the Bible's very plain and very clear about the future. And uh, there's a lot of bad things that are coming. And I saw this thing yesterday where this uh, devil-possessed lunatic from the World Hell Organization um, comes out and he says, we're going to have a war on meat. Oh, you mean, you mean uh, commanding to abstain from meats? Hmm. Um, well, that goes against my ancestral traditions and my ancestral culture. There are some people that are vegetarian. Fine. One who's weak eateth herbs, the Bible talks about in Romans chapter 14. That's fine. You're not to despise someone if they have a different diet than you. Uh, but it works for both ways. You can... I'm supposed to be okay with somebody that's a vegetarian? Fine. Um, but you're supposed to be okay with me if I'm a meat eater. And I eat meat twice a day. And my dog eats meat twice a day. And my wife and my son, we all eat meat twice a day. With vegetables and fruits and things as well. We're omnivores, we're not carnivores. But if I had to be a carnivore, I could probably do it. Um, but I like vegetables and I like fruit. So I eat everything. But um, there are certain ethnic foods which are not good in my system. And people need to respect that. Again, these satanic devils out there in the new forms of governmental offices and understand true government offices are appointed by God. And God will force them to do certain things and have them, they're not supposed to have them do his will. For a nation and of course you get a nation like america that's being judged those politicians are going to do evil stuff sure i get that but there are people in positions of authority that were never elected they you can't vote them out or whatever else um, you have no say in the matter and those positions are satanic positions now they're not beyond god controlling them don't get me wrong, they're still in a terror to the evil because people are evil. People are sinners, they need to be judged. But my point is, it's not the thing, the thing of a king or somebody that, that's in authority. You know, kings, the bloodline of kings, originally speaking, would have been there. It would have been people that would have been very of a higher, more noble class pure in their kindred, obviously. Uh, not just, oh, I'll just go marry whatever I want or whoever I want. No. And uh, I realize that hasn't existed in a very long time. I tend to believe that uh, King James was the final monarch, legitimate monarch of England. And Oliver Cromwell uh, took up the position of Lord Protector. And that was sort of the, the line of kings has ended. And now you have uh, 
parliamentary man that feared God and he wants to do right. And he's going to depose King Charles the first. Although I'm not a fan of King Charles the third that's currently in there right now. Um, but anyhow, uh, we have this, uh, whatever the guy's name is, this um, guy for the World Hell Organization. We're going to have a war on meat. Getting back to that subject. Uh, well, that's a war on my culture. That's a war on who I am. You can't just come along and tell me what to eat. See, that's going beyond where you can go as a ruler. You start to have people, you start to tell them what they can and cannot eat. Excuse me? No. If I'm going to, if I want meat, I'm going to eat meat. And again, what do we do about that as Christians? How do we, he who now letteth will let, how do we hinder that system? And then cross a bridge here. Um, you can see the bridge. Try not to shake it too bad here. You can see it up river there. And then I'll show down here in a minute without shaking it too bad or dropping my camera in. That'd be bad. My camera doesn't need a, a bath right now. This bridge shakes a little bit. Try not to make anybody motion sick. But, um, ooh. <laughs> a little weird but uh, how do we hinder that how do we resist this satanic power well the way that you resist it is to say okay you're saying I can't have meat then I'm going to buy more meat I'm going to eat more meat and what is that going to do that is a way of saying I will not uh submit myself to your system I'm not doing it and it also shows the farmers out there hey there's still some really good sales uh, the people are not listening to the government goons and um, so I'm going to keep raising cattle and doing whatever beautiful spot here show everybody this really neat Now we're going to climb up here, up that way, right up that way. Um, <clears throat> give you the mountain climbing experience today, but uh, resist with your dollars. As I've said, all well, they want to confiscate guns, and you buy more guns. So we're going to confiscate the Bible well then you buy more Bibles we're going to say no to meat you get more meat do what you can to resist the evil system there's down there some whitewater rapids down there if you can see that be careful how I'm climbing here just climb right along the edge more exciting that way <laughs> But my point is, the way that you resist evil is you say, I understand my rights come from God, and I'm not okay. Whoa. I'm not okay with you taking those rights away. Down it goes. Way right down there. Watch that next step, it's a doozy. So. <laughs> All right, let's get back here. All these little plants along here, by the way, all these little small leaf plants, they're all wild blueberries. Northern Maine, wild blueberries. So, but brethren, we have to fight against these things. See, but brother, it doesn't make sense. The Bible prophecy says that these things would come to pass. Yeah, I get that. But, Bible prophecy says that we're also supposed to hinder it. We're supposed to slow it down. Give people as much chance as, we, as they can have to get saved. 
All right. Now I'm going to head back down the trail here. We get caught up to my wife and son and dog. Oh, feeling the need for something to drink. Don't have my, it's just my camera bag that I'm wearing. And um, so, but there's water, spring water waiting for me at the vehicle. Probably about a mile away right now. So, what do we do? We resist. We say, no. Um, hey, we're going to have this new law that's been passed. And, uh, you know, they're going to require you to bring your house up to certain standards. ESG standards and all this other stuff. Again, the whole environmentalist thing, climate change and all this other stuff, is just another one of their witchcraft spells that uh, come along and say, oh, the climate's in serious trouble. No, it isn't. Um, you know, you listen, I mean, just listen to a weather radio. And you'll hear the high for today was set in, you know, 1922, and the low for today was set in 2006 or something. I mean, you just do the scientific research. You know, you say, well, that's just an anomaly. It was just one time. No, it happens a lot that the, it was warmer in the past than it was recently. And you can look that stuff up. It's very simple to find that. You know, there are times when you have a, a warmer period of years through the winter. You have times where it's colder. Not a big deal. And again, somebody believes in climate change, they're actually saying that they don't believe in God. Because God is not in control. Oh no, the earth is dying. It looks kind of alive to me. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm a nut, I realize that to most people, but you know, this really doesn't look like death out here. It looks like life. Um, and again, you know, see they, they come out and they'll say all this stuff because they want you to believe that it's up to man to create the wonderful kingdom. And it's not. Jesus Christ brings in the millennial kingdom. The kingdom of his reign. Um, it has nothing to do with a bunch of wicked sinners. Oh, we're going to come up with this new technology. You know, this uh, electric vehicle future. We're going to have EVs and they're going to be so much better. They're zero emissions. Unless they catch on fire. And then they burn at 4,000 degrees and you can't put the fires out. And, um, you know, and they pollute the atmosphere. You know, Elon Musk has done more for the planet than anybody else. Well, you're probably right about that. He's done more to pollute the planet. I mean, let's talk about where the battery materials come from. The uh, lithium, which is a highly volatile metal can explode when you put it in water. I mean, just terrible to use that stuff. But, you know, uh, let's talk about Elon Musk with his SpaceX. Let's shoot rocket ships up to see if we can. And we'll go explore outer space. We're going to colonize other planets and things. No, you're not. Oh, but we can try and whatever. Yeah, and then your rocket goes up, comes back down. Boom, blows up. You know, and as I've said before in other videos, uh, it's illegal for private individuals to burn some trash or something on their property. You can't do that. Uh, it's bad for the environment. And your gas car is bad because it puts out carbon, you know, mono carbon, is it uh, monoxide or dioxide? I can't think right now. But it's bad. It's polluting the environment, you know. It's your, you're upping your carbon footprint. Oh, what about when, when one of Elon Musk's uh, rocket ships comes back down to the earth and blows up? What about that? You know, is there any carbon released into the atmosphere? Oh, well, well, yeah, but you know, that's necessary because we have to have it. We have to be able to know that we can get off of this planet after we destroy it. You know, and go to a new planet and destroy that one. We'll start over someplace else. Resist. 
resist. You know, the Bible says um, that in the latter times that some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You know how a seducing spirit talks? Let me demonstrate. Um, we here at the World Health Organization have recently determined that there is a threat of man-made climate change and that all of us need to do our part to think about our our home. What is our home? Why, it's nature. Then you cue the music, you know, you know, and whatever, and, and yeah, we, we probably should. I guess we should do something. I guess I should probably get rid of my pickup truck and get me one of the Mary EVs. Get one of those electric vehicles. They're $120,000, but I could probably just maybe make a payment plan and get myself into debt so I can save the planet. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, oh well, but brother, they, they passed the rule. Out here in California, they passed the rule. So what? It's kind of like the thing of, you know, broad daylight and you see a sign at a construction area on the road and it says, it's a construction zone, turn your headlights on. Uh, no. I will turn my headlights on if, uh, if it makes sense. If it's a foggy kind of a day and the workers need to see me. But in the broad daylight, sunny daylight, I think headlights on is actually a bad idea. Think logically. Resist. All right, um, kind of just give you a negative example of this. You have, uh, you know, the, it's illegal to drive while talking on your cell phone. How many people pay attention to that? People resist because they don't care. And you know what? Not many people get pulled over for that. A lot of people get away with it. Again, remember, all laws for them to be official have to have 60% compliance. So they can come out and they can say, um, there are certain passages in, in the New Testament that are anti-Semitic, like I talked about in another video. You can't use those passages. You can't say those passages. They're, they could hurt a Jew's feelings. Okay, then what's next? A man shall not lay with mankind as an abomination. You know, men with men working that which is unseemly. Uh, Romans chapter 1, Pauline epistle for today. Oh, we shouldn't say that because some rainbow pervert could get offended. Well, I'm offended at them, you know? And so you have to learn how to speak to these people. Again, that's part of the thing of Christian resistance. They come up to you and they say, excuse me, excuse me, you're guilty of a hate crime right now. You are not allowed to do this. You're a white Christian nationalist or something. And uh, you say, uh, well, I am white. I can't change that. I am a Christian and I do believe in this nation. Am I free to have my beliefs? Or do you have a right to take my beliefs from me? See, because they try to do the whole, you know, we're tolerant, we're not against bigotry, or we're against bigotry. But then when you spin it and say, actually, you're being bigoted to me right now. No, not, you know, and then they get it on the defensive. That's where you want them to be. Speak to them in such a way that it puts them on the defensive. Uh, you know, this is illegal. This is a hate crime, hate crime. Uh, well, I'd like to charge you with a hate crime then because you're going against my beliefs. You're saying I can't have my beliefs. You know, uh, my grandparents on my father's side were Mennonite. My father was raised Mennonite. And the reason he left the Mennonite cult is because they were pacifist. I'm not a pacifist. My father wasn't a pacifist. And quite frankly, you get right down to it, my grandfather, who's Mennonite all of his life, he wasn't a pacifist. I don't know if I told this story before, but there was a time when um, a man was actually going to kill my grandfather, threatened to kill him. And he said, I'm coming to your house and whatever else. And my gra grandfather said, okay, come to my house. I'll meet you out front. And he went out and he confronted the man. No gun shooting or anything else, but he stood up to the guy. That's not very pacifistic. He said, well, he didn't have a gun. That makes, makes him a pacifist. He shared the love of Jesus or whatever. No, he told the guy off and stood up to him to his face. And I know my grandpa, he died in 1991, so it's been a long time ago that it, he passed away. But uh, he had a very strong character to him. 
And if it would have come, you know, push to shove, and they would have said, we're going into the house, that guy would have said, I'm going into the house to kill your wife and your children, my grandfather would have probably killed the guy as a Mennonite pacifist. Um, again, you know, I've studied the life of Menno Simons. I've read a book or two of his, and I understand at the time during the Reformation, you use that tactic of pacifism to wake people up. Again, pacifism was used as a battle tactic. You can't you know, there's too many radical Roman Catholics out there for you to take over. And so, what do you do? Well, you kill them with kindness, so to speak. You come out and you say, I'm willing to shed my blood, have my blood shed as a pacifist. And, you know, I'll let, you know, I'll die in this system. Just like what Jesus Christ did. Jesus died on the cross to pay for sins. He wasn't, you know, afraid to stand up against the Romans. He'll be doing that in the future. And had the nation of Israel actually, you know, theoretically, if they had accepted Jesus as their Messiah, Jesus would have been their king. He would have said, okay, he would have died on the cross, but then when he rises from the dead, the nation of Israel says, that is God manifest in the flesh. You know, had they done that, then the kingdom would have come in the Lord would have made some things happen. Of course, he knows everything from beginning to end. So, you know, didn't work that way, didn't happen that way. Um, but when Jesus comes back, he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, not the lamb that was slain. Don't forget that. And so, as Christians, um, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Somebody brought up that point and they said, well, see, it's not suffering then. No, you can suffer and still have a good life, okay? Uh, I suffer, but I'm out here, and I'm having a good day today. Wonderful day. Beautiful day so far. I was working at the property this morning. It's about 8.30 in the morning right now. It's a little bit late. We're coming out here to hike. We get up at 4.30 in the morning. Usually I like to be here, you know, 6 o'clock at the latest. That way the bugs aren't up yet. Um, it was fairly cool overnight, probably in the low 40s. But uh, understand, we are at war in this world. Understand how to fight. Understand how to resist. You know, the Bible says that we are to resist the devil, not just give in to him. And so when you read there, and it talks about uh, commanding to abstain from meats, it says about in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Some shall, not all. Uh, do not listen when they tell you, there's the river over there. Do not listen to them when they tell you that you can't do, name it. No, sorry. Um, forbidding to marry. I had a guy recently viewer of the channel and he came out and he said that I am guilty of doctrines of devils because I forbid people to marry. I think I talked about that in another video, but I'll just bring it up again in case you haven't seen what I had to say about that. Me being opposed to interracial marriage is not me forbidding anybody to marry. Okay, I don't marry people. Uh, you make that decision between a man and a woman and between your families and before God. Um, that's the way that it is. You want to have a preacher kind of preside over the thing and whatever, well, okay, fine. Don't get married by the state. Have a uh, biblical coverture. I have a study on that, you can watch that. Um, it's just that simple. I'm not forbidding to marry. You can marry whoever you want to. Um, when I wanted to get married to my wife, I didn't consult anybody and ask if it was the right thing to do. Uh, I knew it was the right thing to do. I prayed about it. 36 years old when I got married. Uh, a lot of praying, a lot of fasting, a lot of weeping in prayer and, and uh, struggling. And There's a hollow log. Log on to this website now. <laughs> but uh, I waited. I waited a long time to find the right woman. And... Uh, I'm thankful that I did wait. There was some 
uh, girls that I could have married, including some interracial relationships that I could have gotten messing around with. Um, and Lord had me wait. Lord busted up every single one of those relationships, had me wait till my wife came along. And uh, so from, to, to accuse me of a doctrine of devils, forbidding people to marry, do what you want to do. Yeah, I don't care. Whatever. But uh, the whole anti-meat thing and the whole climate change and all these other things, oh, we're going to be passing laws. You can pass all the laws you want to. I will not comply. You say, well, brother, they're giving you two weeks to comply. Then I have two weeks to pray. Uh, well, you don't understand, brother, because um, a month from today, they're going to be passing these new hate crime laws in America, and uh, you're not going to be allowed to speak against certain groups anymore and whatever. Well, then that means I have 29 days to preach as hard as I can. You see what I'm saying? And I don't care. I have Catholics that watch me and things. Um, your church, <laughs> oh boy, you're a faithful Catholic. You need to understand how corrupt and rotten and political your church is, not just has become, but is. And um, you need to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you do what you want. I can't force you to believe the way I believe and whatever else. Can't force you to do that. But um, you need to have your own conscience and be self-governing. Somebody comes along and tells you to do something contrary. No. Some priest comes along and says, I want your little boy to come into my office with me here and you know, come to the church and help out or whatever. No, can't do that. Sorry, not letting my son out of my sight. Not letting my little girl go to anybody. Oh, but I'm the father so-and-so. I'm the priest here. I don't care. I don't trust anyone. Uh, quite frankly, I won't let my son alone with relatives. That's how nuts I am. You know what, though? My son's innocence is worth it. I'm going to protect that boy. My wife protects him as well. They're up ahead of me walking. Catch little glimpses of them now and then, but uh, they're ahead of me. But um, I'm just right back here, ready to protect. Oh, there's some guys up ahead. Don't worry, it's a police officer. Don't worry, it's a park ranger or whatever. You can trust them. They'll be all right with your son. Uh, no, he won't get out of my sight. Uh, you say, would you have been, been the same way uh, 100 years ago? Absolutely. 200 years ago? Sure. <laughs> He's my responsibility. I am his protector. I am his provider. And uh, well, we'll pass laws that, you know, you have to homeschool your children and you have to do this and that and whatever. Mm, I'm not going to be answering to the state for that. I will do what I want to do. Um, you know, and again, the thing of being resisting, you don't have to go out in front of your house or whatever and hold up a big sign, I resist the tyrannical government. You don't have to do it that way. Just do it quietly, but firmly. Uh, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt used to have a statement, speak softly, but carry a big stick. <laughs> you know, uh, speak softly, but, uh, don't come after me. Uh, you're going to try to have some, you know, all children have to go through a drag queen story hour or something. It's required or no, no. Um, well, we're going to have diversity week at the uh, public school. Oh, diversity week. Really? Does that mean that I can come and share from the King James Bible how to be saved? Oh no, we can't do that. Okay. Then it's not diversity week. It's intolerance week. It's destruction of traditional culture week. I'm not okay with that. It's intolerant. It's, it's bigoted on your part. And I will continue to put out videos here on YouTube and I will rely on the Lord Jesus Christ to keep these videos present and to keep these videos going. I am not intolerant. I am not bigoted. I express my beliefs that I believe in. You can take it or leave it. I don't care one way or the other. I would never force my beliefs on anyone else because 
the very key of my beliefs is free will. So how can I say that I've genuinely, genuinely converted souls when I'm forcing them at gunpoint? You will convert or die. Well, that's not free will. So we live in a world of people that worship the devil. Not openly, but they do it covertly. It's their true belief. And uh, that's why we as Christians must resist. Whom resist? Steadfast in the faith. I saw this thing as uh, Whoopi Goldberg, another skin suit for devils. And she said about this football player, this guy came out, the Kansas City Chiefs or something, Roman Catholic, and he was saying about sodomy being a wicked sin. Amen. He's right. So you, you would agree with a Catholic? When the Catholic agrees with the Bible, absolutely. Yes. That doesn't mean I'm going to convert to Catholicism and just say amen. Praise the Lord. I told the truth. But she came out and she said, Whoopi Goldberg, you know, Whoopi Cushion. She came out and she said, oh, I can't believe that people still hold on to this anti-LGBTQ, you know, whatever. Uh, I can't believe people are still like that. Oh, it's just, oh, it's terrible. Intolerant bigot. I mean, if I want to come out here and say that um, that uh, these fur uh, things, that I worship these or something, don't I have a right to do that? I don't believe that, but, you know, don't I have a right? Why would you be so intolerant that you would say, well, he's not allowed to do that? Well, because you're not hurting things and whatever. Yeah. So, walk and talk and rant. <laughs> uh, I know some of you like them. These, some people don't. It's real easy. You know, you can just kind of push the off button. You don't have to watch. You like to see out here in nature, see the beauty of God's creation and, you know, pick up something, glean something from what I can say. Uh, I have a great deal of love for people. And um, it comes off sometimes as sarcasm and arrogance and whatever else. But uh, I care about people. I genuinely do. And we all have to resist. We all have to say, you know what? Uh, I have my beliefs, you have yours. Don't, you can talk to me, you can witness to me, you can share, you know, your beliefs with me and whatever else. But don't come after me and try to take away my freedoms and my rights. Then we have a problem if you start to do that. That's not acceptable. And I will resist that. And uh, this football guy or whatever else, um, you know, what he said, said too the thing about women should be keepers at home and whatever else. Good. Good. Um, well, Brother Brian, you need to see the bigger picture. Traditional Catholicism is taking over this country. They're going to bring in the alt-right trad cat Nazi system and whatever else. Well, then I'll deal with the alt-right trad cat Nazi system when it comes. <laughs> you know, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Satan is the God of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. What am I going to all of a sudden have a Christian kingdom here before Jesus Christ sets it up? No. Not going to happen. But as a Christian, you have to say, okay, I see where thir certain things are going, and if I resist this, it will be better than that system over there. You say, well, the, then you're saying about voting for the lesser of two evils. No. Again, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you have to do what's right. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. There are righteous things that we can do to exalt a nation. Um, America would have been finished a long time ago if there weren't people trying to make righteous things happen. And um, I don't care who it is out there. You know, some Muslim comes around and they say we're tearing down these rainbow flags or whatever else um, because they are intolerant. They're trying to put them up on the city hall. I think that happened in Michigan or something. I saw that the one time. 
Well, praise the Lord. Oh, you're for Islam. I'm not for Islam. Islam is a satanic cult. I'm not for Islam. But I'm for righteousness. I'm for people coming along and saying and doing the right things. Well, they have an agenda. and I know all about that stuff. Studied it for years. But, you know, the older I get in the Lord, um, it's not that I become more tolerant. It's just that I understand the world better. And, you know, you kind of uh, have this uh, mentality, you know, when you first get saved, that you're, it's your responsibility to get everyone else saved and you're going to make the turn the world upside down with your preaching and whatever. And then you, Lord humbles you, starts to knock you down a few rungs. And you see some of your converts, the people that just think wonderfully of you, and you think, you pray, and you think, thank you, Lord, that brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so got saved, and they're just on fire for you now, Lord. And then it turned out to be false. <laughs> oh, oh no. Uh, well, this person over here, they're, they're my friend. They won't ever turn against me. Oh, they turned against me. Uh, and, and after a while, you start to kind of just say, well, you know what? I think God's in control. I think the Lord will do whatever seems right to him. And uh, my job is to do my best to put down my own flesh to be the best man that I can be. That's my job. My job is not to get out there and get everybody in the world saved and save America and all this other stuff. It's not my job. Just do the best that you can and resist. Christian resistance. I like the sound of that. I mean, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans chapter 12. Um, if you're not conformed to the world, then what does that mean? That means you're resisting the trends of the world. Like I said, if you're a Catholic out there, resist. Resist. Oh, here comes the Pope, and he's doing some other kind of thing to make the Catholic Church fly rainbow flags. Uh, you know, I guess it'll eventually be the throne of St. Uh, Penelope or something, or instead of St. Peter. <laughs> uh, Peter now is identifying as Penelope or something. Um, <laughs> shouldn't say that too loud. It might happen. But uh, resist that. If you're a Muslim out there and you see people going against the teachings of the Quran or whatever else, um, stand against it. Whatever you do, stand up for righteousness, stand up for things that are right and go against things that are wrong. So, very few make it in, brethren. There's few that are saved. It's a narrow road. We walk. Uh, we're the only ones on this road right now. Do you ever feel like that? Aren't many. So, just about back to the parking lot here. So, video time is winding down. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the walk. And uh, hopefully, I've encouraged you to get out there and find a place to hike and go out and enjoy God's creation even if they're flying and landing on you and biting you and taking your blood. <laughs> it's just part of the joy of living in the Northwood. You know? Then you get to remember your walk by having the insect bites itch for the next you know, few hours or whatever. It's great fun. So, that is going to be it. And uh, thank you to everybody out there for your prayers and your kind words of encouragement. That always means the most to me. And for your support as well of the ministry. Um, I am here to help you resist. I am here because I am resisting. I'm not okay with the way this world's going. Be encouraged, brethren. Um, God is on our side. Righteousness will always prevail. In the end, people eventually get sick and tired of sin and wickedness and righteousness will win again. So that is going to be it. 
and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.